In the last Bible study, we talked about the issues between Sarai and Hagar and alluded to the fact that they might have played out for a while through Isaac and Ishmael. And if you want to extrapolate it even further, you could see how it leads to some historic tensions between Judaism and Islam, or between Israel and Palestine to take it into a modern context. Today, we're faced with a situation between Joseph and his brothers. Once, Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. Seems a bit odd to me to hate someone over a dream. Hating someone over what they've done might be one thing, but over a dream, something that isn't real? He said to them, listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly, my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. Now, if I were to insert myself into that story and my sister told me that she had a dream like that, that I was to bow down to her, well, there would be a moment or two of family sharing about what I thought of that idea. I can see, even though it was a dream, how his brothers got upset. I don't know about your experience, however, there was a time when I was growing up that being a dreamer was not valued. Not valued at all. What was valued was hard work and dedication effort, concentration, attention to detail. Dreaming? No, not so much. Only recently have I begun to read, though, about the value of sleep and the research around it and how necessary it is. And Of course, it's in sleep that we encounter dreams, even if we don't necessarily remember them. I rarely remember my own, but the research says that they're there. We may just not remember them. It is this word in the Hebrew scriptures for dreamer, halom, in verse 19 that intrigues me. Let's take a moment and look at it outside of the negative context that there might be about dreamer. Certainly, it seems to be a good translation to translate halom to dreamer, as it is in this case. This is what it looks like at its root in Hebrew. Hat, lamad, mem. When we search a little bit further for that root, though, that basic part of the word in our Hebrew scriptures, we begin to see other possibilities as well. This is what the root looks like when we search for it. Again, you may not be able to see, but in the middle of the circle, it says, become strong. And there's another translation that's not often used. It's restore to health. And we know that strength and health both require rest, sleep, and by extension, I would say, even requires us to dream. 
Which brings me to the first question of today's study. How are dreams and strength related in your mind? Take a moment to pause the video and think about that. Maybe write down some notes. How are dreams and strength related? Ready to move on? Okay. This is one of the readings that we identified as one of conflict when we first started to group together these readings into this season of struggle. And certainly we see the conflict between Joseph and his brothers. However, there's a second question for today's study that takes conflict in a slightly different direction. What do you do when your dreams conflict with your reality? Taking the knowledge that dreams and sleep and strength and health are all intertwined, what do you do when your dreams conflict with your reality? Are you willing to follow your dreams or do you just chalk them up as not making sense? And where is God in the midst of all of that deliberation? So take a moment again to pause and think. What do you do when your dreams conflict with your reality? Take some time to answer these questions and drop me a note. Maybe being a dreamer isn't such a bad idea after all. Maybe we can look at that together. See you again in a few days. Until then, peace and blessings to you.